Absolutely. Very less money going to that particular conversation. Tell me, what's not happening or what needs to be done? I wouldn't say very less money. I would say that some money is going to the sector, but we just need to ensure that we have the entirety of the private sectors and enti entities that obviously are going to that direction to obviously participate. Because it's important to obviously just invest into the infrastructure, which is the key development for Africa. And we also, that leads me quite nicely to the part where we obviously also need to involve a lot of women into the infrastructure project to ensure that we, ins we ensure our growth because it is the future, Africa, it, infrastructure, it is the future. Wherever you see your roads, you know that it's going to be a potential development because of that simple roads, mm -hmm. because you'll attract people. There will be a lot of people that come, that will move into this area wherever you see your roads only. So with that hard infrastructure talking, we also need to associate the soft infrastructure. And that's where we probably would see the potential of private sector investing and allowing the sector to grow itself. Definitely. Linda, you're speaking about uh, bringing more women into realizing or bridging the gap between uh, Africa's infrastructure development. But of course, we've seen uh, governments striking a balance when it comes to members of parliament or the government. Just as of recent, Rwanda had a big cabinet reshuffle. And we're looking at 50-50 in at the government. Seychelles did the same just a week ago. Ethiopia did exactly the same, electing the first ever female president. Tell me, how or what are we looking at when it comes to infrastructure? Do we have any numbers to actually see how many women are currently employed in the infrastructure industry? You need to obviously divide this because you'll see a lot of women working into these, um, the social entrepreneurs, women working into social housing, irrigations. So you need to divide and under try and understand where you're positioning that number for that number to obviously just be correct because you'll see women participating in social housing. Mm -hmm. You'll also see women participating in irrigation, water sanitation, but you will not see over 29% of women working into the hard infrastructure, which is about the construction, which is about building the roads, which is about ensuring that the railway and uh, the ports are maintained and, and built. So you will not see a heavy number of women there. And it's important that we have a great diversity. All the leaders need to obviously just ensure that we have a great diversity and an inclusive project in, in infrastructure where women also have their part and their role to play. So they need to obviously just be on the table strategic thinking needs to be done with women to ensure that all projects are done correctly for the goods and the greater good of all populations because we see a lot of projects in Uganda and Kenya being worked by entrepreneurs and they're female entrepreneurs, they're working on social housing and we'll see that today this is the major, major project of a lot of banks and a lot of global agencies like AFDBs and the IFC, the social housing, the rural area, uh, we need to have housing and municipalities, constructions and it leads from those social housing that those women have been doing for years. So I could even go along the line and say that a lot of women led the way as far as social housing is concerned. And that's why they need it on the table to ensure that we have an inclusive growth and infrastructure project that suits the population because not a lot of women are into the hard infrastructure, although they're the ones that suffer the most because the impact is heavy on women as opposed to the men. So we are not saying that obviously we want to take the men out of the table, but we want to ensure that the strategic thinking, the implementation and the work itself is right. done with women. Linda, of course, uh, if you heard me or qu uh, quoting uh, the African Development Bank, we're looking at about a need of almost 100 billion US dollars annually into infrastructure development. Now, uh, this brings me back to uh, the private sector do we necessarily need to leave this to the governments to take care of all the roles that we need to actually do trading between uh, two different regions? Do we entirely have to leave this to the likes of IFC and the World Bank or the Africa Development Bank? What is the role that the private sector is actually playing in infrastructure development? That's a very good question, actually. We can't leave it all to the global agencies like the IFC and the AFDB. The IFC and AFDB are obviously just promoting and uh, investing heavily into projects. Mm -hmm. But what needs to be done, the, the private sector needs to be consulted and the IFC and the AFDB obviously needs to ensure that there is a right path and to communicate heavily with the private sectors because they can't, we can't, as we say, they can't do it all by themselves, clearly. We still need a lot of financing, we still need a lot of projects to be done. And we'll see that with the help and assistance of the private sector, things move a bit quicker. Therefore, we need to review the policies that are in place and ensure that the private sector is always invited at the table when a big project is being, when a tender is being negotiated. The private sector needs to have the opportunity to bid and win. 
because we'll see that during those tenders, the, the, the policies are quite heavy for some of the private sectors to even bid or win. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they're probably just going to go on to joint ventures or the work is obviously going to be left again into the hands of those um, big, big, big agencies. Therefore, they need to give that light, that, t that sits at the table for the private sector to work. And the private sector itself needs to ensure that he, se he sets himself mm -hmm. a goal to ensure success and infrastructure construction is it, and deals. Is this some of uh, the conversation that you're yet to speak about when it comes to the 13th and the 14th of that December at uh, the fifth conference of public works and infrastructure? Absolutely, and that's why we've uh, we've been calling upon the IFC and the AFDB to be participant of this conference, and they will actually be there, because it's important that we sit on the table and discuss where, what is the role of the private sector, what is the role of the AFDB. Are we really relying on the AFDB and the IFC to do everything for us? And if if not, where do you position us as private sector in order to assist into building what is obviously going to be ultimately for everybody? Therefore, it's important that um, people understand that the private sector has a massive role to play. And we see a lot of federation being built for the private sectors. And it's all for the greater good so that we understand the impact and the role of the private sector. Imagine the AFDB or the IFC having an event and nobody of the private sector was to attend. I mean, there would be nobody at the event <laughs> and there will be nobody to talk to or there will be no no one to obviously invest anywhere therefore it's important that this this um, this importance of the of the private sector is mm -hmm. clearly defined as well as where they sit in now that we're looking at it being held right here in the heart of Africa, in Kigali, tell me, what are some of the lessons that uh, Rwanda could learn from the rest of the continent and maybe vice versa, what can other countries learn from Rwanda? We just saw uh, Rwanda being ranked the second most competitive economy in Africa. That's really great, but what can we get from the lead, from the books? I think it's a very, it, it, it's, it's a great number. I mean, Rwanda is doing an excellent job and um, it's obviously, there is a lot of political will mm -hmm. and there is a lot of um, the governance it's it's just extraordinary and it's working efficiently hence the results I mean those results are not magical it goes through hard work and uh, here in Kigali I mean I've been here for a few weeks and I've been here several times and it's all about the hard work and it's all about ensuring that we have that desire and the political will to to ensure that we get to our growth but we need to to, to, to stick to our plans. We need us um, for, for the rest of Africa. I mean, you'll tell me that the whole of Africa is different. Priorities in, across Africa, across the continent are completely different, but we need to share those priorities and then together see how best we can take a leaf out of that book and ensure that we take it back home and do the best that we can. I would even take an example, which is something that I really enjoy here in Kigali. It's the Umuganda, which to me goes beyond social responsibility. To me, it goes to the sense of belonging. It goes to the sense of uh, the, the, the will of gaining, of getting a clean city, the will of ensuring that we're developing our city, mm -hmm. the will of ensuring that we're developing our country and that we're positioning it, first of all, in our, our, our own hearts, right. for everybody else to have that same feeling. So to me, that is just an example that we can all take and ensure that we copy to the best of our ability so that it fits with our own priorities and then we develop ourselves because I guess the, the aim of Africa is to ensure that we develop. So is the aim of that conference. Put, it, put all of us on the same platform, all right. discuss our issues, discuss where we can obviously support one another, find the right synergies, the right partnerships for the greater good and the development, the economic development of Africa.